Today, we will examine freshwater basics, groundwater depletion in America and around the world, how fracking and the bottled water industry affect our water supply, what happens when a community runs out of fresh water, and finally, possible solutions. How much water on our planet is fresh, not salty? Of the total global water on our planet, between 2.5 and 3% is fresh. Groundwater is water beneath the surface of the ground, so it can be intermingled with porous stone or sand. The geology of an area affects groundwater supplies. When it is removed via pumping, shallow groundwater supplies are recharged by rain, but it can take decades, even centuries, to recharge deeper areas. When you go to the grocery store, you see a beautiful array of fresh produce. A third of the USA's vegetables and two-thirds of our fruits and nuts are produced in California. So let's examine what is happening there. California is by far the dominant U.S. produce growing state. No matter what state you live in, you're eating vegetables, fruits, and nuts from California. 81% of all carrots come from California. 95% of all broccoli. Oh, you don't like broccoli? Okay. How about strawberries? 91% of all strawberries are grown in California, then trucked across the nation. California is depleting its water because of frequent, more severe droughts, less snow melt, farmers overdrilling water wells, and planting thirsty crops. This morning, California is facing a different kind of emergency. The state's water crisis is impacting one of the world's most important farming regions, the San Joaquin Valley. The ground is literally sinking by up to one foot a year. Ben Tracy shows us how the land is becoming as unstable as the water supply. Every six weeks, Michelle Sneed visits this white shed. She checks the pulley system and records a measurement. The numbers show that the ground beneath her feet is sinking. We're measuring the highest rates we've ever measured here, among the highest rates ever measured in the entire world. Sneed is a government hydrologist and says parts of California's Central Valley are dropping by one foot each year. Some areas are 10 feet lower than they used to be. We would have had many, many feet of dirt above our heads right now. That's right. That's right. We'd be... California's farmers are pumping groundwater as fast as they can in order to keep their crops alive during a drought that has left them high and very dry. But when this much water is pumped out of the aquifer below ground, the clay between the pockets of water collapses and the ground starts to deflate like a leaky air mattress. The sinking is buckling the walls of irrigation canals, damaging pipes, creating giant sinkholes and cracking homes. This bridge has dropped so much, the water will soon flow over it instead of under it. Fixing the damage could cost more than 100 million tax dollars. You just have to keep going deeper and deeper. Steve uh, Arthur is a well driller. Some wells are now 2,500 feet deep. That's two Empire State buildings underground. Water that deep is thousands of years old. But it's desperately needed because more than half of the country's fruits, vegetables, and nuts are grown here. You tell this farmer he can't drill any more wells, he can't farm as many acres, you're going to go into the store and buy a gallon of milk for $10, a loaf of bread for 5 then the public's going to say, hey, what happened? So we see this progression from green to yellow to red as the state is literally drying up. NASA's senior water scientist, Jay Familietti, uses satellite data to show the depletion of California's water resources. The state has lost 16 trillion gallons in the past four years. That's enough to fill Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the country, twice. So what happens when the water is simply gone? That's a question that all of us, first of all, have a, a difficult time really fathoming. 
if we still want to have agriculture, we have to come up with the water from some other place. But for now, the drilling continues, even with the ground all around it caving in. For CBS This Morning, Ben Tracy, California, Central Valley. 16 trillion gallons. I know. You know Steve Arthur, the guy from the drilling company, makes a good point. $10 for milk and $5 for bread, you, you, that will get your attention. Drought is an extended period of dry weather caused by a lack of rain or less snowmelt in the spring. In 2015, California had its worst drought in history. Temperatures were high, there was no rain, the snowpack was low, and their reservoirs were low. As early as 2013, NASA satellite images revealed snow melting earlier in western states. The image on the left is Pinion Forest, near Los Alamos, New Mexico. It was taken in 2002. The image on the right is the same location two years later. Groundwater depletion is also caused by the planting of thirsty crops like almonds. A multi-billion dollar industry, California's almonds suck as much water in one year as Los Angeles uses in three years. In California during the recent drought, some farmers drilled much deeper wells and got more water. The farmer who could drill the deepest won and could fix prices on crops while future generations have lost. Low reservoirs add to the groundwater depletion problem. This used to be the bottom of Lake McClure in LaGrange, California. Heavy rains ended the California drought in 2016. Cycles of drought followed by floods are characteristic of climate change. Rain can't be absorbed into baked ground, so it flows into rivers and out to the ocean, eroding the soil. This erosion contributes to the next flood. This means less water recharging the aquifers and, well, you get the picture. Even if you don't live in one of these produce growing states, their water problems are your water problems because if they run out of fresh water, the cost of food will skyrocket. Meet the Ogallala Aquifer. You can think of an aquifer as an underground reservoir. It supplies water to almost the entire Midwest, America's breadbasket, which grows 20% of all the food in the United States. If this aquifer goes dry, more than $20 billion worth of food and fiber will vanish from the world's markets. At the rate it is being pumped, scientists say it will take natural processes 6,000 years to refill the Ogallala. This image gives you an idea of the size and location of the Ogallala. The only stable, healthy areas left are shaded in blue. The Midwestern and High Plains states produce most of the grain and corn in the United States. Much of the corn is used for corn syrup in junk food products. In the High Plains states, groundwater is pumped out using this type of windmill. Uh, when Grandpa was drilling wells, you find big gravel or rocks like this, uh, you were going to find a really good well. And now, it just... Uh... Now, the only water it finds is uh, a couple, three feet at the very bottom of the well that uh, the pumps can't effectively access anymore. NASA is taking a look at the big picture of the global water situation. NASA's GRACE satellite collects data on total water storage, the effects of human water use, climate change, and groundwater extraction which in many parts of the world is unmeasured and unmanaged. Freshwater depletion is not unique to America. It's a global issue. 
The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations is advocating for a new vision and global action on groundwater governance. Global groundwater withdrawals have tripled over the past half century. More than a fourth of the current withdrawals are non-sustainable. Their studies have revealed that most urban aquifers suffer from sanitation issues, while coastal aquifers are exposed to saline water intrusion. Industrial pollution, pesticides, and fertilizers also find their way into reservoirs. By 2035, about 40% of the world's population will live in areas facing water scarcity. Water is set to become more valuable than oil. Climate change and rising food prices heightened the Arab Spring and contributed to the civil unrest in Syria. The Fertile Crescent, which is desert surrounded by oases, was a place that fed the Middle East for centuries, much like California feeds the United States. Due to drought, man-made dams, and overpumping of water, the Fertile Crescent can no longer sustain thirstier traditional crops such as pistachios and almonds. Syria relies heavily on grain from Russia, but Russia was hit with a heat wave too. Millions of acres of wheat withered in the blistering sun. Russian President Vladimir Putin banned wheat exports across the board. Over in the Mediterranean, in 2016, NASA published data showing that this portion of Europe was in the middle of the worst drought they've had in the last 900 years. We've looked at how the agricultural sector uses water. Let's explore the usage by two other industries, energy and bottled water. Fracking is short for hydraulic fracturing. Fracking forces open fissures in subterranean rocks by blasting chemically treated water at high pressure into the ground to extract oil or gas. This oil and gas is then used to generate energy. How much water does fracking use? Between 2005 and 2014, approximately 250 billion gallons of chemically treated water was used, 210 billion gallons of wastewater was generated, and 40 billion gallons of the chemically treated wastewater stayed in the ground. The energy industry calls this wastewater produced water. Produced water is used to melt ice in winter or is treated for use on crops in California or injected back into deep wells which cause earthquakes and contaminates the aquifers which provide drinking water. What's inside produced water? The public is not allowed to know. That chemical composition is protected by a loophole in federal law, commonly referred to as the Halliburton loophole, which exempted the fracking industry from federal oversight under the Safe Drinking Water Act. Surprisingly, in 2013 alone, the EPA issued 1,500 permits for companies to pollute aquifers in some of America's driest regions. Frequently, their reasoning was that the water was too deep to be worth protecting. But as we saw at the beginning of this presentation, all of these aquifers are important. Fracking is a serious regional problem. It's not unusual for communities that live near fracking sites to end up with water so contaminated it burns. If you don't live near a recent environmental disaster, you might think it doesn't affect you. But you pay for oil spill cleanups, firefighting and emergency response, loss of animal habitat, and contamination of fish. When your tax dollars pay for these hidden fossil fuel costs, there is less money for things like student financial aid or research. You think fracking uses a lot of water? Animal agriculture uses 1,000 times more water than fracking. So a simple fix is reach for that veggie burger and eat less meat. Because we're seeing more drinking water emergencies in this country, another simple solution? Save the bottled water for those situations and use a refillable water bottle every day. We're dependent on an economic system that depletes natural resources and drives climate change. Our economy requires extraction of vast amounts of water for various industries. Can we break this cycle? Yes, here are possible solutions desalination, 
Toilet to tap, we'll explain in a minute. Adapting agricultural practices, changing personal habits. From necessity, the Middle East has led the world in desalination technology. This desalination plant in Saudi Arabia is the largest in the world and solar powered. California is planning to build the largest desalination plant in the Western Hemisphere. Removing salt from seawater to make it drinkable used to be expensive and inefficient. Leftover salty brine was pumped back into the sea. Today, scientists are creating ways to repurpose the brine and keep it out of the sea. Direct potable reuse water treatment is a fancy way of saying toilet to tap. Communities around the world are turning their sewage water into drinking water. Indirect potable reuse water treatment facilities take sewage water, purify it to drinking water standards, then pump the water back into streams, lakes, or aquifers to restore the natural water balance. It may sound gross, but it's very effective, and often the water that comes out of these facilities is cleaner than your current tap water. Communities in Georgia, New Mexico, California, and Texas are embracing this technology. Internationally, Israel is a leader in water reuse. It recycles 85% of its wastewater. By 2020, Israelis estimate that 50% of their agricultural needs will be met with recycled water. Modern farming techniques like drip irrigation help farmers conserve water. Farmers are planting less thirsty crops and adopting organic farming practices to adapt to changing water supplies. Here are a few things you can do. Demand hyper water efficient appliances. Promptly fix or report leaks. Encourage family and friends to conserve water. Buy and eat local. Carry a refillable water bottle. Learn where your water comes from and get involved. Don't waste food. What can my elected leaders do? Enforce water restrictions. Crack down on industries that steal or pollute public water supplies. Improve water delivery systems. Conserve irrigation water. Form unified regional water management groups. If your leaders are doing none of the above, vote them out of office. I've talked enough. Here are a few questions to get your discussion started. Now that you know more about drinking water, we hope you'll actively protect it.